Hi, I'm Steve Pinkney, animation art historian, and I'm chatting today with one of the most famous voices in the world, Noel Blank. Noel, your dad, Mel Blank, created the voice of Bugs Bunny, Yosemite Sam, Daffy Duck, just to name a few. How many voices did Mel create? You know, Steve, he probably created about 1,500 voices because they did about 1,100 cartoons, as you know, because you're such a historian. Mm. But not only Warner Brothers cartoons, but Hanna-Barbera and Walter Lance, Woody Woodpecker, and, you know, from the Flintstones to the Jetsons at Hanna-Barbera and Heathcliff. When you add them all up together, over 1,500 voices. And he's known as the man of a thousand voices, but... Yes, it should have been man of a 1,500 voices. <laughs> You've actually counted about 1,500 voices. Oh, yes, yes. Amazing. That's unbelievable. And now I know you picked up doing the voices after your dad. As a matter of fact, you had to uh, take up for your dad after he got into a, a really uh, a heck of a car accident yes, in the, the 1960s. Automobile accident in 1961. was ter It was on Dead Man's Curve. And uh, they didn't think he was going to live at all. He was in a coma for about 14 days. Finally came out of the coma... When the doctor looked at the television set that was constantly on in the ICU and said, Bugs Bunny's on there. Mel, can you hear me? No. Bugs Bunny, can you hear me? And he, the first words that he said after 14 days is, What's up, Doc? He says, Porky, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I, can, I can hear you. Daffy, yes, I can hear you. So he did the whole repertoire of voices when the doctor asked him to do so, and then he remembered everything after 14 days of coma, he knew exactly what was happening, and he was, uh, um, the, it was just amazing to watch this happen. Now, didn't, didn't the doctor later ask him what, what happened there, and, and he said, well, maybe I've given life to the characters for so long, they decided to give it back? Back to me. Exactly. I think the doctor said that, but it sounds like something that Mel would say. That's really an extraordinary yeah. story. So you had to fill in. You had to really step up yeah. and to do his voices then for a while. For a while, uh, I remember going over to Projection Room 14 over at Warner Brothers and trying to do what he did. I'm not a voice artist as such. I can do, you know, nine of the characters out of his 1,500. But I had to learn to do them when I was a kid because I was directing him. With so, we, we worked together for mm, 31 years, so 33 years. But uh, I had to direct him. So he says, how do you think this would sound? And I would, I would do it. Now, that was the first season of The Flintstones. And yes. Mel was Barney Rubble and Dino and a lot of the other Bedrock characters. Did you fill in then? Uh, for no. We built a studio in the bedroom underneath, well, we had the microphones in his bedroom because he was in a full body cast. Mm. We had the microphones in the bedroom and myself and Joe Barbera were three rooms away in a little converted studio that we made and I was punching the tape recorders and Joe was uh, listening to it. He was producing it and Alan Dinehart, the director, was in there with all the members of the Flintstones around his bed, which the microphone was draped in front of him, he was laying flat out on his bed and doing shows until two in the morning. So Alan Reed, who played uh, Fred Flintstone, and B. Benaderet, who they was uh, Betty, everybody was crowded around Mel's bed. Gene Vanderpile, everybody with, that was With on Mel in a body cast with a microphone suspended from the ceiling. Uh, that body cast came all the way up to here. And his legs were straight out with a bar in between them. I had uh, read, I think it was a, a Honolulu paper that said the next day that uh, Bugs Bunny was dead. Oh, after the accident, when I came down the, the stairs uh, into the uh, luncheon area at the UCLA hospital, I was reading the headlines of the paper, and the Honolulu paper said, uh, Bugs Bunny dies. Wow. Yeah, it was an unbelievable day. So I've read stories about how Mel uh, came uh, down from Oregon to try to uh, get a job at the Warner Brothers studio and do voices. and. Uh, they just wouldn't hire him. And finally, uh, uh, what did you like to say? The guy who was in charge, uh, he finally died. He died, yeah. <laughs> and Treg Brown, who was a wonderful uh, animation uh, editor and sound effects man. He did both. He was an editor and sound effects. He let Mel uh, come in after Mel two years tried with this other fellow. Mm -hmm. And he said, come on upstairs. That was a terrific audition, Mel. Mel Eddie Seltzer, that, that was the other guy, the guy who died. 
Seltzer. No, no, Ellie or... Seltzer lived. Ah, okay. <laughs> No, that wasn't. There was another person that that passed away at that time. That was at the gate. We call it. He wouldn't let Mel in. But once uh, the Treg Brown let him in, brought him upstairs. They were having a Christmas party upstairs, and uh, uh, Treg says, "Do your stuff, Mel." 